The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is an open world action RPG released by CD Projekt Red in May of 2015. I wasn't really in the gaming community or really online at all during this time, but I'd still heard of the game. I had friends and family that played this game not too long after a release. From all these people, I heard nothing but praise about an expansive world and a compelling story, the likes of which had never been seen before. Alas, at this time I had no way to play the game, no console, and no PC. I got my first Xbox a few years later, but the game had slipped my mind by that point. But one day I was looking through an Xbox sale and saw it, The Witcher 3, on sale for 15 bucks, and I remembered. I remember what everyone had said about it back just a few years ago. This was in 2020 when I purchased the game and played it. After playing for just a few hours, I realized what I knew to be true today. I hate The Witcher 3. This video was originally gonna be just that, a critique of The Witcher 3. The more I started to dig into my complaints though, the more I realized something. Why didn't I like The Witcher? Was it the clunky combat? The uncomfortable atmosphere? The story that the game tells? No, I can look past these things. The reason why I can't stand The Witcher 3 was the way in which the actual game presented itself. So many quests and side quests lined up in one menu with no direction in what order to complete them. This manifested a certain anxiety within me to find the right way to play the game. I would spend more time figuring out what to do than actually doing something. Completing the cycle over and over again just filled me with dread. And eventually, after about 15 to 20 hours of playtime, I couldn't take it anymore and I haven't touched the game since. As a human being that reads the titles of videos, you probably know where this one's going. This is Gaming with OCD. As a young lad in his early teens, I was diagnosed with Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD for short. OCD isn't the easiest thing to describe, and it's different for everyone who has it, so I'll explain it in two different ways. First, a definition. OCD features a pattern of unwanted thoughts and fears that lead you to do repetitive behaviors. That definition is a bit broad, so I'll define it by just telling you a few things about what I personally do. I look for patterns in most places. This is most apparent when I'm walking anywhere. If you look closely, I won't step on any lines in the pavement, and on tile flooring, I have a little algorithm where I count up each tile into squares and use that number to determine the number of steps I get on each color tile. Next, there's the OCD clean stereotype, which isn't really true. I'm not gonna freak out if I'm in an unorganized space or anything. Organizing just relaxes me. One thing that does bother me though for some reason is when it rains and I'm driving and I have to turn on my wipers. Every single time I get this weird pain behind my eyes that's kinda impossible to describe. Another thing that my brain constantly wants to do is check to see if I locked a door or have all the items I need for a certain event, usually checking multiple times for what seems to be no reason. Lastly, what I was talking about earlier with The Witcher is the need to make the right decision, which ends up making me take forever to make what most people would consider the simplest of decisions. This comes along with the need to always be productive, which makes it pretty hard to relax sometimes. My OCD is less severe than many others, and thankfully it doesn't affect my life too greatly, but one thing that it does affect is the media that I enjoy. I talk about my feelings about The Witcher a good amount when it comes up in conversation, and a fraction of the people I talk to feel similar to the way I do. Not for the same reasons usually, but we share the same opinion of the game. One game that I feel that almost everyone except for me adores though, is Outer Wilds. I really wanted to love this game. A lot. One of the best videos on this entire website is centered around it. But I just couldn't get into it. It was the same problem as The Witcher. So many different options, but just presented in a different way. Instead of a list that grew as you progressed through the story, it was a list that grew as you explored the galaxy. Again, leaving it very hard and stressful to make a right decision. So I put about 15 to 20 hours in, gave up because I was just hating the experience and used a walkthrough, which wasn't enjoyable either, due to that the entire point of the game is to explore by yourself, kinda making me question why the walkthrough was there in the first place, but that's a topic for another time. Back to Outer Wilds, the exploration based game focused on tangible objectives and that just isn't a fun style for me. But you might be thinking, Wait, this kid loves Metroidvanias, but hates exploration? He's gotta be lying cause there's no way. But before you dislike bot this video and go DDoS my grandma, I can explain. In Metroidvanias, there's a huge opportunity for exploration depending on the game, it's just presented in a different way. When I'm exploring in a Metroidvania, I always feel like I know where I'm going. The game guides me subtly to where I need to go, and when I need to make a decision, it's usually between left, right, or down. Unlike in Outer Wilds, where I could go pretty much wherever I wanted at any point in the game, the Metroidvania style of exploration is simpler, but it has the same effect when you find a secret room or accidentally stumble into a place you shouldn't be. 
There's also no long list of things that you have to go through and achieve or explore, like in The Witcher and Outer Wilds. It's all natural, and at my own pace, not influenced by any in-game requirement. I know that these objectives in both of these games I've talked about aren't required, but the way the game presents themselves, it makes it feel like a requirement to me, that I just can't get rid of. A very different type of game genre that I also can't get myself into is the multiplayer shooter. This isn't because of their design or anything, it's just because I suck at them. In combat, I look for patterns. This is a good strategy when fighting a boss battle in Dark Souls, but it's not the greatest when someone with a Chinese gamer tag starts shooting at you. Those that have watched me play multiplayer games can attest to this. Whenever I get into a tight situation, I always respond in a specific way, and if that doesn't work, I'm done for. Adapting to fast-paced, complex situations isn't my forte. And because of this, I've always stayed away from shooters, even single-player shooters for some reason. I know I would almost definitely love Doom Eternal, but for some reason, my past experiences with other shooters just turns me off from it. I know this whole time I've been talking about how facets of different games turn me off, but sometimes parts of games can turn me on too. Wait, no! Dark Souls 3 and Hollow Knight are two of my favorite games. I'm not the greatest at either of them, but I managed to get by at a reasonable level while enjoying the game. There was one point in each game though that I could barely stop myself from continuing to play. The first of these is one I've mentioned on the channel before, The Nameless King. I can confidently say that I've spent 10-15 to 15 hours of my life just fighting The Nameless King. I had to beat him and it became somewhat of an obsession. So I just kept going and going, unable to stop myself until I hit a point where it was physically causing me stress. So I forced myself to put down the game. With OCD, it's very hard to quit something once you've already started and committed yourself to it. This is the same cycle I went through with Radiant Absolute Radiance. I was trying to reach something that I frankly couldn't reach. This isn't to say that I stop myself from trying hard boss battles. I absolutely adore hard boss battles. I used to do the Pantheon of Hollowness to calm myself down and take my focus off what was going on in the real world. That's the reason I've beaten Sands an unusual amount of times. Thinking of it, that's one of the main purposes of video games, to immerse you in a world separate from the one we inhabit. This brings me to a small dilemma. I love Souls games, but I've never found an open world game that suits me. I fear Elden Ring. I'm gonna get it, there's no way I don't, I'm just unsure if I'll enjoy it like I have the other FromSoft games I've played in the past. We'll have to wait on that one though, I'm not doing another Elden Ring speculative video here. As I said earlier, OCD varies significantly in the way it affects people, so I asked my good friend Swoy how his OCD affects the way he plays video games. Especially in games with set endings, I often found that the games that gave me the most trouble were the games that gave me strict endings. Um, an example would be the Metro games. I struggled a lot with those because I sort of knew that my actions were determining whether or not I would get the ending that would let me sleep at night. And if I wasn't getting that best ending, I was a bad person and I was, you know, no good. And I just became really obsessive over making every single one of my choices uh, lead to the best ending and not just playing the game. And it changed what was once, like, real enjoyment of the game to extreme displeasure. Um, another example would be Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I made the mistake of like researching the endings beforehand and made sure that I got the best ending possible. Although I will say that the gameplay in Sekiro was so fun that it didn't bother me too much that I was obsessing over that and it kept me coming back. So that has been my beautiful experience of gaming with OCD. You see, it's not easy to nail down how a mental disorder can affect the way one sees the world. It can appear to exert many different types of influences on different situations. Though there is somewhat of a baseline anxiety in certain uncomfortable instances, usually dealing with the choices that need to be made. The last distinct factor I'm going to explain about OCD's effect on the gaming experience is how it affects the way I play games in general. Mostly coming down to binge consumption. When I get a new game, that is my only source of entertainment for the time that I'm playing it, except for maybe a book or two. I'll attempt to funnel as much free time as possible into playing the game in as short of a time as I can. For example, a month ago, I got unworthy for free by backing Crowsworn. So that weekend, I spent around 11 hours over two days beating the game and getting the endings. By the middle of my second playthrough, I was getting pretty tired of the game. But to get to the final final boss, I needed to complete this playthrough and a subsequent one. I didn't want to do it. Yet, I had to. This made what could have been a few fun weeks into a daily grind where I couldn't enjoy myself. I know it sounds illogical, and it is. If it wasn't, it wouldn't really be a disorder. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is, although the way I experience games is different, whether through my decision making, pattern loving, or anything else, 
I still manage to love video games, and I love sharing my experiences with all of you. Thank you guys for watching me for a whole year now. It's kind of crazy to think about. I wanted to make something special for the occasion, and well, this was it. Huge thanks to both Spotcam and Swift for participating in this video, and please go check out Spotcam's channel. I'll leave a link in a pinned comment. He's one of the most underrated content creators on this site. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.